Hello, hello, guys. Can you hear me? Hello, hello. Can you hear me, guys? Hello, teacher. Hey, what's going on, Angelica? Are you ready for your English class? Yes. Awesome, awesome. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the topics that you remember about the previous class? What do you remember from the previous class? What was the topic? Hello, hello. Yes, um, good evening. Uh, hey, how I you remember doing, Amanda? <laughs> I'm fine. I remember uh, some topic is was a uh, phrasal verb. The the last the last topic mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the class. Okay. Um. um Gerunds, AMG, and different and different terms. Okay, that's awesome. Um, can you give me some examples about the phrasal verbs that you remember from the previous class? Do you have uh, some examples? Mm, yes, uh, for, uh, for example, turn on, turn off. Uh, I, I, <laughs> uh, I know. <laughs> Something okay. like that. <laughs> okay, okay, that's good. That's good. Turn on, turn off. Excellent, excellent. Um, let me have Diana Vasquez. Can you give me some examples uh, about the information that you remember from the previous class? Hello, Diana Vasquez. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, how Good are evening. you? Good evening. How are fine, you? Thank you? Awesome. Fine, thank awesome. You. Welcome to your English class. Can you tell me a little bit about the information that you remember about the previous class? Mm, the last subject I remember right now is the one where we we the teacher taught us how to make an appointment with somebody mm -hmm. with somebody mm -hmm. um, like the play. Mm -hmm. the time and the plan okay okay awesome awesome well welcome back diana thank you uh let me have angelica lasso welcome how are you hello can you tell hello? me hello can you tell me a little bit about what you remember from the previous class what was some of the topics can you give me some examples Mm, I remember using phrasal verbs and infinitives. Can you give me some examples using phrasal verbs? Mm, please. Uh, call up Maria. Okay. And okay. take off your shoes, maybe. E excellent. Excellent. Can you give me an example using an infinitive? Oh, infinitive. I think it's to play something. Oh, okay. I, I don't I, remember. I like to play video games, for example. Yeah. Yes, I like to cook, for okay. example. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Monica Escobar, welcome. How are you? Hello, Monica Escobar, can you hear me? Okay, maybe Monica Escobar has problems with her audio. Hello, Lisette Castillo, how are you? Hello, teacher, good evening. Good evening, it's well, welcome to your English class. How do you feel today? Thank you, teacher. Um, my day was very good. Excellent. It's it good day. 
Excellent. I'm happy to hear that. Can you tell me a little bit of it about what information you remember from the previous class? What do you remember? What topics? Mm, Jerome and short response and a condition make you future. Excellent. 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 Can you give me an example of the future with a condition? If you get back late, I be angry. Okay, very good. Very good. Now, in today's class, we are going to be getting started. The topic for today's class is going to be related to the passive voice. Passive voice. Who can tell me in what situation you are going to use the passive voice? Who can give me an example? Um, it's like when you say, I'm, I'm talking about legal, uh, legal subjects because that's what I handle. <laughs> okay, but it's okay. Like when you want to say the institution, no, that the process has been approved by the institution. Very good. Perfect. That is perfect. The process has been approved by the institution. That is a very perfect example of using the passive voice. I'm going to write it down. I would like for everybody to please copy the example in your notebook. The process has been approved by the institution. Now, in this situation, why is it good for us to use the passive voice? Why do you think it is good to use the passive voice? The process has been approved by the institution. What is the difference between the institution approved the process and the process has been approved by the institution? What is the difference? It looks similar. What is the difference? In the first sentences, the fact that there is no there of the action mm -hmm. is the fact is more important than the door of the action. That is correct. In the first sentence, the process has been approved by the institution. The emphasis of the sentence is referring to the action, not who is doing the action. Normally, when we put the subject first, we are giving more importance to the doer of the action. However, when we express the action first, and then the subject, in that case, the importance or the emphasis of the sentence is the action. Or for example, people say eh, dinner is served. Dinner is served. Let's say that you, you say dinner is served by 
my mom. What is the importance of this sentence? My mom, oh, that dinner is served. What is the emphasis? Dinner is served. The action option is more important than the door. Very good. The action is more important than the subject of the sentence. If I say to you, the TV was stolen by a uh, thief. What is the importance in this sentence? The TV was stolen by a thief. What is the importance in this sentence? That the TV was stolen? That is correct. The action. If I say to you, for example, if I say to you, for example, the tire, the flat tire, the flat tire was changed by my dad. What is the emphasis in this sentence? The flat tire was changed by my dad. What is the focus? The flat tire was changed. That is correct. The action of the activity. So basically, we understand that we use the passive voice to express that the action is more important than the subject of the sentence. Or, or in the example of this sentence, if I say to you, if I say to you this sentence, right here the tv was stolen do you know who stole the tv do you know who stole the tv you don't know you don't no. know right you don't know who stole the tv so you can just say, the TV was stolen. Who stole it? I don't know. Okay. Um, if, I, if it's obvious, for example, for example, dinner is served. Who normally serves dinner? My mom normally serves dinner. So am I going to say dinner is served by my mom? No. I know my mom served dinner. I know that. It's not my dad. It's my mom. Always. So the subject is obvious. So if the subject is obvious... If we don't know who is the subject and when it's more important the action than the subject. Any questions at this moment? Please, no question. please copy the examples in your notebook at this moment.
Let me know when you are finished. Is everybody finished? Are you finished? No. Okay. Finished. All right. Thank Is you. That, thank you, Lisette. Is everybody finished? Yes. yes. Okay. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to go to the platform, and I would like for everybody to open the platform and go to where it says Intermediate English Module 3. Everybody go to your platform and go to Intermediate English Module 3. In today's class, I want us to practice using the functions on Zoom. Why is that important? That's important because when you are working in pairs, I need for you to have the ability to share your screen with your partner. Why? Because sometimes you are going to be comparing information. So at this moment, I would like for everybody, one by one, I want you to share your screen. I want Angelica Lasso, you can go first. Share your screen, please. No me deja compartir. Okay, give me one second. Okay, try it again. Awesome, awesome. TV. Thank you, thank you. Yes, very good, thank you. Uh, let's continue with Amanda Menendez, please. Share your screen. Excellent, Amanda, thank you. Wow, section 1.9, good job, Amanda. Diana Vasquez, let me see your screen. Diana Vasquez. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent, Diana Vasquez. Thank you. Let's continue with Lisette Castillo, please. Share your screen. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much. Now we will move forward with Marlon Barrientos. Marlon Barrientos, share your screen, please. Sorry, we are viewing Diana Vasquez. Stop sharing. Thank you, Diana. Uh, Lisette Castillo, please continue. Lisette Castillo, share your screen. Uh, 
Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Marlon Barrientos, please share your screen. Okay, Marlon Barrientos, can you hear me? Okay, so maybe Marlon Barrientos is having technical problems. Let's continue. Monica Escobar, please share your screen. Monica Escobar, can you hear me? Excellent. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. Let's continue. Wendy, please share your screen. Wendy. Hey, sorry, I don't finish. Oh, that's okay. Right now, I only want to make sure that everybody knows how to share the screen on Zoom because you will be working in pairs. So I want to see that you can share your screen with your classmates if they ask you for to share the platform. Awesome, awesome, Wendy. Thank you, thank you. Let's move forward. Let me have Eric Ramirez share your screen, please. Very good, very good, Eric. Thank you. Let's go ahead and work with Kevin Antonio. Share your screen with the class, please. Kevin, Antonio, can you hear me? Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Kevin, thank you, Kevin. All right, good job, guys. The only person I have not been able to communicate with is Marlon Berrientos. Uh, Marlon, can you hear me? Good evening, teacher. Hey, how you doing, Marlon? Hey. Can you share your screen with the class, please? Awesome, awesome, thank you, thank you. Okay, so it looks like everybody knows how to share the screen. That's very important because sometimes when you work in pairs, you are going to be sharing your screen, sharing the sentences, sharing the examples, helping each other. So it's important that you guys know how to share the screen. Now, I would like for everybody to raise your hand. Everybody, raise your hand. Like this. Do you see the little hand on my screen? Okay, thank you, Angelica. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Eric. Amanda. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Lisette. Thank you, Marlon. Okay, I am waiting for Amanda and Monica Escobar. Raise your hand, please. Angelica Lazo, raise your hand, please. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Monica. I am waiting for Angelica. Angelica, please raise your hand. 
Awesome, awesome. Everybody lower your hand. Okay, so in what situation are you going to raise your hand? You are going to raise your hand when you want to participate, when you have a pronunciation question, when you have a listening question, a vocabulary question, grammar question, or when you want to volunteer. Uh, Angelica, Marlon, and Eric, you can put your hand down. Thank you. Now, at this moment, I am going to show you how to check your platform. If you want to see your progress, you are going to go to this section where it says progress, progress right there on the platform. You are going to click on progress. And then you are going to display your progress. Can everybody see my progress? Okay, thank you. Now in this section, I want everybody to pay attention where it says 100% and where it says 80%. Who can tell me why this is important? Why are these indicators 80%? and 100%, why are they important? Who can tell me? Okay, that's important because when you are working on the platform, you have to finish section one, section two, section three, section four, and section five, the midterm exam and the final exam and they have to be at a minimum, minimum of 80%. Minimum, all of these have to be completed at least 80%. What does that mean? That means that you have to finish each activity, each section, at, at, at least 80%. If you can do 100%, awesome, excellent, great, perfect, fantastic. But if you can't, that's okay. At least 80%. Do you understand? Do you understand? Yes, teacher. Does anybody have any questions? Gracias. Does anybody have any questions referring to this information? A question referring to this information? No question, teacher. Okay. Now you're going to say, Mrs. Santos, uh, I don't have access to the platform. Raise your hand if you don't have access to the platform. Raise your hand. Okay, so everybody has access. Okay, that's good. I like that. Now, what we are going to do is look at the first video. We're going to look at the first section. How do I view the course? OK. 
Okay, I'll just go back. We're going to look at the first video, which is going to give us examples of how to use the passive voice. Now, we got passive with by, passive with by. Everybody please listen and take notes in your notebook. Listen and take notes in your notebook. If you have a question, write it down. And then when we finish the audio, I'm going to be responding to questions, referring to the grammar, referring to the pronunciation, giving you more examples. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, teacher. All right. Please. All right. Let's do this. section I want everybody to pay attention where it says the reasons we don't know who did the action for example for example the TV was stolen do we know who stole the TV do you know no you don't know you were at the beach. You were at the grocery store. You were not home. You don't know who stole the TV. There is the next one. There is no door of the action. There is no door of the action. For example, for example, If I say to you, the process, the process was approved, but we don't know with which specific institution or which specific department approved the process. We don't know. It doesn't say who approved the process. And the last one, the fact is more important than the doer of the action. For example, prices, prices were frozen. Thank God in El Salvador, right? Our prices were frozen. That's a super good thing. Who froze the prices? We don't know and we don't care. We care that prices in El Salvador were frozen. So we don't get affected too much about the recession. Do you understand? Does everybody understand? Yes, teacher. All right. Yes, teacher. I would like for everybody to please uh, listen to the audio. Passive. So you see the difference and notice. Hi, welcome to another module. This time I'll study passive. Copy the examples in your notebook. To the topic, let me tell you what passive voice does to a sentence. Passive voice changes the emphasis on a sentence. In other words, we may say the same thing in a different way. You may be wondering when to use it. Passive voice is the best way to express an idea when, number one, we don't know who did the action, number two, there's no doer of an action, and number three, the fact is more important than the doer of an action. As always, I will ask you to stay around and stay for the explanation. We will compare active with passive, so you see the difference and notice the emphasis on each one. We will give you examples of each use, 
as well as the structure of passive voice. Passive with by, simple past. The passive changes the focus of a sentence. For the simple past, use the past of be plus past participle. Active. The president opened the building in 1931. Passive. It was opened by the president in 1931. Active. An American architect designed the building. Passive. It was designed by an American architect. I have this scrabble sentence for you. My sister, this book, in 2010, wrote. Can you try to unscramble the sentence and make sense of it? I will give you 15 seconds. Let me have one volunteer, please. One volunteer. My sister, this book in 2010 wrote. Who can tell me the order of this sentence? This book was writing by my sister in 2010. Awesome. This book was written by my sister in 2010. Perfect. Let's continue. Great. So we came up with, my sister wrote this book in 2010. Now in English, we can say the same things in another way. Let's work with another scramble sentence and let's do the same and scramble it and make sense of it. This time I will give you 20 seconds. My sister. Everybody do it in your notebook. In 2010, written was. Were you able to do it? I hope you did. This book was written by my sister in 2010. Now let's take a look at each sentence. In this first sentence, which by the way is in active voice, the emphasis is on my sister. It was not Susanna who wrote the book, it was my sister. This book was written by my sister this book is the object, was, was or were, written is the past participle of the verb, by, by, my sister is the subject. In this second sentence, we're using passive voice and the emphasis is on this book. The most important fact is that the book was written. Now let's write examples for the uses previously mentioned in our intro video. Remember? We don't know who did the action. My house was broken into on Friday. Who broke into our house? All right, what is the meaning of broken into? What does that mean? Who can tell me the meaning? Amanda, Mena, do you have a question? Amanda, Mena, do you have a question? Can you hear me, Amanda? Yes, teacher, but I don't have a question. Okay, okay, okay. Now, let's continue where it says, we don't know who did the action. My house was broken into on Friday. 
who can tell me what is the meaning of broken into? Who can tell me the meaning of broken into? What is the meaning of that? Broken into. Like it's under. Oh. Huh? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Go ahead. Who was speaking? Me. Okay. Uh, break into, it's like uh, enter a place mm -hmm. by force. That is correct. Enter a place by force and without permission. That means that they don't have permission to go in. Your car, you can say my car was broken into. If you have a locker in the gym, you can say my locker was broken into. My office was broken into. Do you understand? Oh. House, we don't know. Number two, there is no doer of the action. He was killed in an earthquake. There is no doer of this action. The last use, the fact is more important than the doer of the action. My dog was run over by a car. Who can tell me what is the meaning of run over? Run over. What is the meaning of run over? No, nobody? Oops. Okay, run over means that a car hit him. That is the meaning of the phrasal verb run over. That means that somebody is driving the car and the dog is in the street and somebody run him over. That is the phrasal verb that we use when somebody walking or an animal in this case uh, is hit by a automobile. Do you understand? Yes, teacher. Okay. Let's continue. What happened to my dog is more important than the doer. Finally, let's go over the structure of the passive and simple past. Because we're using passive in simple past, this is what we'll use. Was, were, plus past participle. Before we go, we want you to work on the following sentences so you're able to practice. Our sentences are in active voice. Your work is to switch them to passive voice. Please write them on our discussion box. Number one, mom prepared the food. Number two, all the employees read the memo. Number three, the boy ate the cake. All right, so this activity is going to be your homework. You are going to write these three sentences over here in the discussion forum. You're going to go to the plate to spot where it says where it says añade una publicación. You're going to click on this blue button here. Uh, right here where it says titulo at the bottom you're going to write passive voice and then where it says with the other box right here you're going to write one two three and you are going to write the three sentences in that space. These are active. You're going to write them here, passive. 
And then you're going to click where it says enviar. And then we will be able to look at your three examples. Any questions referring to this activity? Does anybody have any questions referring to this exercise? No, teacher. Okay. Now, for the following activity, we are going to be looking at knowledge check 1.2. In this activity, you are going to create popular works, match the phrases with the appropriate information. For example, the kiss, the kiss. You're gonna say the kiss was composed, was painted, was written, was directed, or was recorded. And then we're going to check together. We are going to work in pairs for three minutes, three minutes. And then we are going to check. Any questions at this moment? Any questions at this moment? Not the chat. Okay, thank you, Eric. Now, please work in pairs and then we're gonna check. Uh, Vanessa Carolina and Monica Escobar, do you need help? Vanessa Carolina, do you need help? Thank you. Hola. Que le vaya bien. Vamos a hacer lo de las preguntas. Oh. Sí, eso vamos a hacer. Algunas las tengo. Ahorita estoy tratando de cargar la, la plataforma, pero no me deja. No sé si se puede compartir la pantalla. Permítame, quiero ver si puedo. No, no se puede. No, no puedo. Vale, déjeme ver si a mí ya me cargó. Quiero ver. Ah, sí, ya, vamos a ver. Ahorita voy a ver si lo puedo compartir. Uh. Uy, pero es que voy por el guía ya, déjeme ver, me, me perdí en las elecciones. ¿Qué tiene que ser acá? Aquí. Uy, pero este es el 10. Solo que a mí por rato, bien raro este volado. Por rato me aparece en español y por rato me aparece en inglés. ¿En serio? Ajá. Pues yo estoy tratando de cargarlo, pero me, me manda la 1.10 y la que nos están pidiendo son de las primeras. Ajá, es la 1.2. Voy a tener que darle anterior, pero qué feo está esto. Anterior y voy por la 1.8. Vale, ya llegué. Ahora voy a compartir. Vale, ahí está. 
This, do you know who create these popular works? It works, son trabajo, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Information, you say, ah, estas piezas, esa es toda la frase. Yes. The keys, uh -huh. eso que no es beso. Keys, ajá, como beso, pero no, es como... Voy a, voy a traducirlo. Como pieza. Ah, ah, ya, ya, ya. Ajá, kiss es beso. Te kiss. El beso, ajá, ¿quién creó el beso? Ajá. Pues, A mí me parece de Guas. Fighted by Gustav Clip. Gustav Klim. Painted, uh -huh. pintado. Ajá. Painting. The sun yesterday. Híjole, esto no sé nada yo. De the los Beatles, quizás. Ajá. Bueno, yeah, que aquí me Es como cantar, va. El cantar. Uh, the song es quien en la canción Yesterday. Yo creo que no. Ajá. The film. Nada que ver, yo tampoco sé. The film, pero aquí por lógica tiene que ser este. Record, direct, este sería. Dirigida. Ajá. Y the novel, write and read. Este tiene que ser writing. Sería, was, no, was, decorate. De, espérame. Ese de bolas de meta. Was decorated by the Bill Bates or algo así. No, porque como dice que el, eh, porque la, la novela, entonces tiene que ser que fue escrita por alguien. En la 4. Ah, ah, en la 4, sí, 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 perdón. Y la esta como es de película, es de, se trata de un director por lógica y la canción que son los títulos y en esta paint, dice usted, no sé, uh -huh. ¿sí? de ópera Carmen, no me sé, painting, writing, direction, recorder, aquí sí, no sé, composes quizás. Ajá, uh, was composes by Georgie Bisset. Veamos si funciona. Wow, salimos bien. <risa> ah, pues sí. Ya terminamos entonces. Eso era todo, creo, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. De eso sí. Ah, pues yo creo que ya nos vamos a despedir porque ya son los 8.55. Ah, solo es de esperar que no vuelvan a... A mí me cuesta pronunciar, ¿verdad? All right, let me have one participant, please. Let me have one participant, please. Let me have one participant, please. One volunteer. <laughs> Nobody wants to volunteer. Did you finish the activity? 
Yes, finished. You finished, Lisette? Do you want to volunteer for the number one? Me, teacher. Okay, okay. Can dijo me, teacher? Yo. Vanessa, okay. Thank you, Vanessa. Vanessa, uh, Vanessa number one, please. Solo que, dice, fíjese que a mí yo tengo un problema con la plataforma. Fíjese que por rato me aparece en español y por rato es en inglés. Ahorita me está apareciendo en español. Ok. Uh -huh. eh, let's have another participant. Thank you, Vanessa. Let me have Lisette, number one. Ok. The kiss was painted by Gustav Klein. Very good. Repeat after me. Yes, painted. 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 Uh -huh. okay. Past participle. Past participle. <laughs> Thank you. Eric, number two. The song yesterday was recorded by the Beatles. Perfect. Thank you, Eric. Angelica, number three. Diana, number two. The film, I'm sorry. All right, the go ahead, film, Angelica. Schittler's List was directed by Steven Spielberg. Perfect, perfect. Repeat after me, please. Directed. Directed. Everybody listen and repeat. Directed. Directed. Perfect. All right, Marlon, number four. The Nobel Prize and Prejudice was Preju written by... Prejudice. James Prejudice. Prejudice. Um, the Nobel Prize and Prejudice was written by Jane Austen. Do we say written or do we say written? Written. Very written. good. Written is correct. Written. Thank you, Marlin. And the last one, Diana Vasquez. The opera Carmen was composed by George Isette. Perfect. Perfect. All right, guys, time's up. Please continue working on the platform and we will continue tomorrow. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. Enjoy your week. <laughs>